Okay guys, question four. So a bag contains 19 red beads and one blue bead only, so 20 in total. Now Linda selects a bead at random from the bag and she notes his color and replaces the bead in the bag. So she replaces it, meaning we still have 20 beads altogether. Once you take one, you put it back in. She then selects a second bead at random from the bag and notes his color. Now, as you can see, I've already got all the answers out. And what, again, as usual, I'm going to go ahead and explain every single result and, and also explain optimal ways to do it too. So let's do each one. So A. So find a property that both beads selected are blue. So this is stand. This is quite standard. So you got one blue bead, and you got and this is out of twenty. So it'd be one out of twenty for the first bead, and you put it back in the bag. So the second bag is gonna have one out of twenty again. So one out of twenty times one out of twenty, one over four hundred. Now next one, find a property that exactly one bead selected is red. Now to get exactly one red, this means you need to have combinations. This means the first one needs to be red, and the second one needs to be blue. So that makes exactly one red in total. Or you could have done the other way around. You could have the blue being the first bead and the red being second. Either way, this means exactly one bead in either scenario. Now, all you do is literally calculate its probabilities. So what I've also done, I've written two ways. This means that you can pretty much write this in two different ways. So your result would be whatever probabilities you calculate for one, then you just have to double it, just times it by two. So property again, red bead first is 19 over 20. Put it back in the bag. Probes again blue is 1 over 20. So just evaluate this, double it, and you should get 19 over 200. <coughs> okay, yeah, I do sound kind of sick today. So, next one, guys, yeah? <coughs> so, in another bag, there are 9 beads. So, 4 of which are green, and the rest are yellow. So, I just put 5 on top. So, you got 4 green and 5 yellow. Now, according to this one, Linda selects 3 beads from this bag at random without replacement. So, here is the key buzzword. Without replacement means is that when she takes out the bead, she's not going to put it back in the bag. So it's, so from 9, the next one will be out of 8, then out of 7, and 6, and so on. So you're going to have less beads every time. So let's, let's think about this. C. So find the probability that two of these beads are yellow and one is green. So you need two yellows and one green. So if we look over here, we need to write down combinations. So what I did is that I'd put as many combinations as I could think of. So you can have you can firstly take out two yellows in a green, or you could take out yellow, green, and yellow, or green, yellow, yellow. Either way, if you calculate probabilities for all of these, you're going to get the same combination of values. So what I do is just I calculate for one of them. So so for example, getting yellow first would be five out of nine. Getting yellow again would be four left out of eight left now. And again, green we got seven altogether, and four of them are green, so four sevens. So you just put this multiply by three because there's three different ways to organize it. And then you should get a result of 10 over 21 in your calculator. So that's cool. Okay, now here comes like the big boss. And there's two ways to solve this. And I realize it's right at the end. <laughs> so Linda replaces the three Bs and then selects another four at random without replacement. So what this means is that she the three Bs she took from part C, she puts it back in the bag. So now we have nine Bs again. So now we're going to find the probability of picking four at random without replacement. So same process. So now it's going to go down to 6 basically. So, find the probability that at least one of the bees is green. Now what this means at least one of the green, it means that you could either have one green or more. So you could have one green or two greens or three greens or all greens. Now this one's quite lengthy, but what I did here is that firstly you find the probability of one combination. So you can have green, yellow, yellow. But then you can, but like the like part C, you can organize in four different ways. You could have yellow, green, yellow, 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 green, yellow, or yellow, 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 green. So it's so what you could just say is times by four. A cool way in your calculator is that you have the choose button, this four C one. You can say that because you want one green, you could say four choose one green, and and the calculator will give you four. In your calculator. And then, yeah, when you do that, you can just list down the probabilities. So again, the green would be four ninths, yellow, four eighths, because you've got five yellows, and it's gone down to eight. Then you take another yellow, you've got four, and another yellow, you get three. And the probabilities are descending. Now, for the second one, again, you want two greens, and you want three greens. So to get two greens, to find all the combinations, put in your calculator, you've got four different options, and you just want to choose two greens. So four choose two should give us six. And again, list out the probabilities similar to the first. So 4 of 9 and another green makes it 3. Now we want a yellow, so 5, another yellow, 4. And then same for the third one, you want 3 greens and a yellow. 
and there's um, four choose three ways to do this and finally four green so do this all add it up and you'll finally get 121 over 126 yeah however <laughs> and trust me i was a bit silly one thing i realized is that instead of doing this long way which is 15 different ways by the way you could just find the probability of obtaining all yellows because if you check that out realize that if you if you want something that's at least one green you're actually covering every different option the only option you're missing is four yellows because that has zero greens so if you calculate the probability of four yellows using this method then you could just simply one minus this result and this will give you the same answer because essentially this is the only property that was not included so if you one minus this you get all of these so yeah <laughs> so sorry i didn't tell you guys that earlier but that is another way to calculate this for feature reference I usually stick to the classic method, but totally up to you. And that's it.